So now that we've seen the area and circumference formulas for circles, we can talk about a unique pose that appears in some variation in other polygons, but it has a particular application and particular consideration when it comes to circles. So as a quick reminder, the circumference formula for a circle is pi times the diameter, or 2 pi r, while where pi is the constant 3.14, et cetera, but often abbreviated just to 3.14, and the area formula is pi r squared. So what we're talking about is something that is called a sector of a circle. And a sector of a circle is just an area that is bounded by two radii. So in this diagram, the sector is what is colored in green. That is called the sector of a circle. We could also add the chord between the two ends of the radii, and then we get something called a segment of a circle or a circular segment. So there are three things that come from this particular setup that we can talk about as it relates to a circle. As we said, a sector of a circle is a portion of the circle bounded by two radii. That's in green. A circular segment is a portion bounded by a chord and the edge of the circle. That's in yellow. And if we take the actual length of the edge of the circle as though we were talking about circumference and straighten it out to a segment and measure its length, not in degrees, but as distance, that is something we call arc length. So go ahead, pause the video, copy these three definitions down along with the diagram that you see at the left. Come back when you're ready to see a description of how to calculate the area and arc length based on a sector. So something that we saw as a part of the GeoGebra exploration is that the bigger the central angle of a sector, the more of the area of the circle is actually taken up by the sector. So if we had a circle that was cut in half, two semicircles, well, then the area of the semicircle would very clearly be half of the area of the circle. And the length of the arc of a semicircle would very clearly be half the circumference of the circle. And it turns out that the size of the arc, the arc length, and the area of the sector are both related to the fraction of the circle that is covered by the sector. And because we can't say just immediately based on looks what the fraction of the circle is, we use the central angle or the measure of the arc to tell us. So if the central angle is 90 degrees, then that means the sector covers 90 of the 360 total degrees, or 1 fourth. If the central angle is instead 40 degrees, 40 out of 360, that means it covers 1 ninth of the area of the circle and therefore the circumference. So the formulas for sector area and arc length are based on those fractions. If we have a central angle that we designate as theta, that is another Greek letter that is used as a variable that is used very frequently when we're talking about angles both in geometry and algebra, calculus, and beyond, um, then the area of a sector is theta over 360 times the area formula, and the arc length is theta over 360 times the circumference formula. And that theta over 360 just tells us what fraction of the circle the sector is taking up or what fraction of the circumference the arc length represents. So go ahead, pause the video, copy these two formulas down as well as the diagram, come back when you're ready to do two example problems and end the video. So again, if we knew that theta was 90, we would substitute 90 in for theta and do 90 over 360 or 1 fourth. If we knew that theta was 60, for example, 60 over 360 is 1 sixth. If it was 1 degree, then it would be 1 360th of the circle, etc. So what you're going to do is you're going to use those formulas for the arc length and the sector area, and you are going to find the area, the sector area, and arc length in these two circumstances, one where the radius is 8 centimeters, the other where the diameter is 4 inches. In the 8 centimeter circle, the central angle is 45 degrees. In the 4 inch diameter circle, the central angle is 60 degrees. So go ahead, pause the video, use those formulas we were talking about, come back when you're ready to see the answers, and end the video. So in the circle on the left, with a radius of 8 centimeters, the central angle that we have for this sector is 45 degrees. So as a fraction, 45 over 360 can be simplified in a very helpful way to 1 eighth. So for the sector area, that is 1 eighth pi times 8 squared. 
I'm going to leave it as an exact area here, again, for the sake of the length of the video. 8 squared is 64 divided by 8, so that is 8 pi square centimeters. That is the sector area. And now if we're looking at the arc length, let's get a slightly different color here, then we have 1 eighth of 2 pi r. And again, we'll do it as exact circumference here. The radius is 8. Those cancel. And we end up with an arc length of 2 pi centimeters. Then for the other circle on the right, 60 over 360, that is the fraction they were looking at. 60 over 360 is 1 sixth. So for the area of that sector, that is 1 sixth times pi, the radius squared is 2 squared, because the diameter is 4. And then we can see that that becomes 2 thirds pi, because 4 over 6 is 2 thirds, and that is inches squared for the area. Now, if we're looking at the uh, length of that arc, that is 1 sixth, times 2 pi r, which in this case is the same as pi r squared, because 2 happens to be the only number where r squared is the same as 2r, times 2 times pi times 2, so or again, 2 thirds pi inches as the arc length. So sector area and arc length both calculated as a fraction of the circle based on the size of the central angle, and you calculate that fraction by central angle over 360, because 360 is the total.